If you're having problems with GarageBand crashing on your iPhone or iPad in this video, I'm gonna give you some of my best tips to get you back up and running. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. Now, while GarageBand doesn't crash a lot, when it does, it can be super frustrating. So I thought I would go through some of the reasons why it crashes and some of the things you can do to get it sorted. Now, like most software, there are a heap of reasons why your GarageBand may crash. So what I'm going to do first is go through my top tips for fixing all sorts of problems. And then we're going to dive into seven separate scenarios that you may be experiencing. And there's links down in the description with timestamps. So if you're having one specific problem, jump down there and see if I've got some solutions for you. And once you are back up and running in GarageBand, check out my GarageBand Essentials series. That'll be linked at the end of this video and down in the description description as well. Tip number one is often called the universal fix because it fixes a ridiculously large amount of problems. And you know what it is? It is turning your device off and back on. And we do that by simply holding down the power button or the power button and the up volume button, depending on your device. You slide that one off to power it off, you turn it back on, and that can fix a lot of problems. Sometimes things have just gotten a bit haywire and simply by restarting your device, by turning it all the way off and all the way back on again is the best way to get things happening again. So tip number one, turn it off and on. Tip number two is having too many apps running in the background. Now my recommendation is to close out of any apps that you don't need to be running while using GarageBand. So depending on your device, you'll either flick up from the bottom and hold like this on a newer iPad, and then you just flick these away. If you're on an older iPad or iPhone, you just need to double tap on your home button and that will go to this same screen. So bring up your screen, get rid of all the other apps and come back to just GarageBand. That's gonna use up less resources, less memory, and ensure that GarageBand can run as effectively as possible. Our third tip is related to when a plugin is what's causing your GarageBand to crash. So the tips here are, first of all, to remove and re-add the plugin. So we'll just remove the plugin like that and then re-add it here by going to our audio unit extensions. If you want to learn more about adding and removing plugins, check out the video up there and down in the description. That will work a lot of the time. If it doesn't, what you may need to do is completely remove that app and re-download it. Let's show you that. Now, full disclosure, the Maze Runner plugin has never crashed on me. It's actually a very reliable plugin. But if we did want to make sure that it was working, we can tap on it and hold until it has this screen here. We can delete the app and that will actually remove it. It will delete all of its data. So if you've got some presets and things saved in there, you may want to make note of those. We hit the delete button. That's gone. We can now jump over to the App Store and find it and re-download it. So here we are in the App Store. We are going to search for Maze Rider auto leveling, that's the one we want. We'll click on that, we'll tap on that, and it's going to re-download. So this basically removes it completely, re-downloads it, and now we can add it back into our project, and sometimes this can fix some of those app crashing errors. And our fourth tip is to use the reset GarageBand function. Now this setting is actually here in our settings option as opposed to GarageBand. So let's tap on settings, first of all. And over here on the left, if we scroll on down, what you'll notice is that we'll start getting the settings for individual apps. If we keep going down there, there is GarageBand. We tap on GarageBand there. You'll notice here that we can come down here and we can reset GarageBand. So if we tap that slider on, and then the next time we open GarageBand, it'll be reset to its default settings. Now you will lose any of the other settings that you've put in place. So if you've gone into GarageBand and you've set up other things in here, if we come in here and we go to our other settings up the top right here, like our advanced settings, you'll lose things like 24-bit audio resolution, multi-track recording, running background. So you will have to turn those back on, but you won't lose any of your projects because they're all stored here in your data. So you'll be fine with that, but the reset Reset GarageBand function can be cool because it can reset all of the settings. And if you're getting the error where GarageBand won't even load, this one is the one you want to go to. Turn that on, reopen GarageBand, and you should be good to go. In this next section, we're going to flip things around and I'm going to go through the seven different scenarios and which tips are going to work to get you back up and running. Scenario one is that GarageBand simply won't open. You will tap on the GarageBand icon and instead of popping in here and being ready to create a song, 
it will just crash. It won't open at all. And in this case, you'll want the reset GarageBand function. You need to come into your settings here, go down to GarageBand on the left, turn on reset GarageBand, close settings, reopen GarageBand. It will reset everything. Keep in mind, it will reset a few of your other settings, but it won't impact any of your actual GarageBand projects. So jump in here, reset GarageBand. That's going to get you back up and running if your GarageBand won't open at all. What if GarageBand crashes when you get to this screen and you try and add an instrument? Well, that's the problem where it's trying to actually load it in here. The key thing to do here is to close completely out of GarageBand to close all of your different apps here. So flick up to close any apps that you've got running, turn your device off and turn it back on again. And then when you try GarageBand and try a new project, you should find that it's going to work for you. The other issue that can cause this is if your storage is full. So make sure you have enough storage on your iPhone or iPad to be able to actually save the project in. And if you're still having problems, you may want to try on your iCloud cloud drive actually logging out of and back into your apple account or your icloud account it's not usually the cause but that's one other thing that i have come across that can work in this scenario if GarageBand is crashing when you're adding automation to your tracks, that is actually a current bug that we have and it's most susceptible on iPads and iPad Pros, occasionally on iPhones and there's no real rhyme or reason for this one. What you can do though is turn this on and back off again and you'll generally not have those problems. You can adjust your automation but sometimes you'll come in here, you'll start adjusting automation and boom, your GarageBand will crash instantly. All you can really do here is load it back up again because it's an intermittent fault, it probably won't happen the next time. But it's a key thing to remember here is to make sure that you are regularly closing and reopening your project because the only time GarageBand saves your project is when you actually close it by tapping in the top left and then reopening the project. So if you are having this bug or if you're using an iPad or iPhone at all at the moment and doing automation before you start automating, make sure that you've saved your file and then start the automation process. If you get one of these crashes, just reload GarageBand and try again. It should work the second time, especially if you come in there and tap in the top left to turn it on and back off again. Just try different combinations of that if you're having continued problems. If GarageBand is crashing and it's letting you know that a particular audio unit plugin is the cause, then the best thing to do is to delete and then reinstall that plugin. So you can either remove it from here uh, just by coming in here to edit and hitting the negative button and then adding it back in. Or if you're still having problems, delete the entire app and reinstall it. I show those earlier in the video if you missed that. The other thing that may be a problem is sometimes if the iOS has recently been updated and we've seen this recently with iOS 13 to iOS 14, some of your plugins may not be compatible or may need to be updated. So do also check the App Store to see if there's an update for your app. Simply jump over to the App Store. We'll come in here. We'll do this now. Jump over here to the App Store. Search for your particular plugin. And if there's an update button next to it, update the plugin and try again. That may be one of the causes of your GarageBand crashing to do with one of your plugins. What if GarageBand is not actually crashing, but you're getting the dreaded optimizing performance popping up on a regular basis? Well, this is usually caused by having a large number of tracks and or a large number of plugins, especially if they're third-party plugins that are using a lot of processing power and memory. Now, the older your iPad or iPhone, so the earlier model, then the more often this is going to happen. So the one really big solve for this is to upgrade or update your device. But of course, that's not for everyone and not necessary. There are some things that you can do. I've got a full video on optimizing performance linked up there and in the description. But basically, if you can reduce down the number of tracks, if you can delete tracks you're not using, if you can turn off plugins that are not actively being used, all of those things can actually help the actual processing power. So keep that in mind that if you're constantly getting optimizing performance, it's because your iPad or iPhone can't render all of the tracks in real time. Turning off some of those processing effects can actually help you as well as reducing the number of tracks in your overall project. If GarageBand crashes when exporting a project, now this one's super frustrating. So if we select this and we go to share and we're sharing this as a song or a project, 
If we get some issue here where GarageBand crashes, more often than not, it's caused by a third party plugin. So you can use the same methods we used before. Remove the plugin, try adding it back in, try reinstalling the plugin. If that doesn't work, it may be to do with where you're trying to save it or where you're actually, or whether you've actually got enough space on your device. So make sure that you've got at least a gigabyte free, preferably two or more, so that you've got enough space to export the final product, especially if it's a large or a long file. The other thing that may be a cause here is to ensure that you're using open in. So use open in there instead of saving to files directly. It won't show it here because I'm in iCloud Drive, but if you have a save to files option, every time you're exporting, make sure that you actually use open in before you export and that is going to ensure that your export will work effectively otherwise you get these weird ghost files and yes that's another current bug in the current version of GarageBand iOS. And finally, what if GarageBand simply won't even install? Now, this happens if you've had it installed in the past and you go to reinstall it. If you're using an older device running iOS 12, you'll go to the App Store and it will tell you that GarageBand requires iOS 13 or higher to actually run. But there is a workaround for it and I show it in detail in another video. So I won't go into detail here, but what you basically need to do is go into your account, go to your previous downloads and re-download it from there. If you go straight to the app store and try and download it, it simply won't work. Now, what if you've never actually downloaded it before? Well, there's a couple of workarounds with that. You can either log into someone else's device that does have iOS 13, download it there, because then it will go into your previous downloads or someone who, has downloaded it can log into your device and download it on your device for you. Both of those methods work and will get GarageBand running on your older device. Now it won't be 2.3.8, it'll be 2.3.7 because you won't have the iOS 13 features like dark mode and USB file support, but you'll have pretty much everything else because the GarageBand version has not been significantly updated in the last couple of years, at least at the point of recording this video. I hope this video helped if you're having issues with GarageBand crashing. Remember, turn it off and on, close down any unneeded apps, make sure you have plenty of space on your device, remove and reinstall any plugins that may be causing issue. And remember, save often. Make sure you're closing out of your project and going back in. So if you do have any of these crashes and these bugs, you won't lose all of your work. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.